Today on Shop Nation, we convert this dirty, dingy basement into a purpose-built, dedicated gym that will actually motivate you to work out. What's up, you guys? I'm Travis, and this is my dark, seedy basement. Not much to look at, but we're gonna transform this space into our home gym. Now, I'm standing in the obviously unfinished portion of our basement. The other half of our basement is finished. We're not gonna to touch that, but in this unfinished section, we have this big unused space that we wanna convert into a gym. Now, in our last house in Texas, we had a garage gym, and we loved it. We used it all the time. But now that we live in the Arctic Circle, um, Ohio, we need a better solution than the garage. Now I know this looks like a well-polished area that would really get you motivated to get down here and work out, but we're gonna give it a bit of a facelift. Now the other parts of the unfinished basement are gonna remain as storage. So a plan for the space is we're actually gonna put up two walls in this corner so we can mount our equipment, like a squat rack, pull-up rack. We're also gonna run utilities on that wall so we can mount a TV, place to plug in the Peloton, plug in some other stuff. And one of the first things that we need to do is address this god-awful lighting. Now because this is a gym and because I have tall ceilings that I wanna take advantage of, these dangly lights with extension cords ain't gonna cut it. So I'm gonna put in some low profile Barina LED fixtures throughout this entire space, really light it up, make it a lot more inviting. But I'm not gonna bore you with doing that because I actually have another video where I already did that. Link is up here if you wanna go check that out. Instead, I'm just gonna clap my hands and it'll be done. Voila, I even grew a beard during that transition, weird. Pretty crazy how much difference just upgrading the lighting can do. Obviously with that, we also cleared out the space and by we, I mean my wife. So normally I'm a huge proponent of 3D modeling everything I build, but in this case, I just did a simple 2D sketch, which just shows the basic layout of what we wanna build. So the first thing I need to do is take out a second mortgage and go buy some wood because holy wood prices and then get all the pieces cut to size and get this thing framed up. So putting the wall itself together is pretty easy. It's just like how you'd frame any other wall inside a standard house, which has 16 inch on center spacing for the vertical studs. But because it's early 2021 and the price of a two x four is equivalent to a Tesla Model S, I'm gonna go with 24 inch spacing. Again, because this is not a load bearing wall and I'm gonna be shooting it with half inch plywood, which should add a lot of strength. So the only thing that I'll add here is to make sure that the side of the wall facing into the room should have all of the two by fours as flush as possible. This will help keep the plywood sheets nice and flat to one another once they're mounted. All right, so the first frame section is in place and there are a couple of pointers that I think are worth mentioning. In order to figure out how tall to make your wall, you need to measure basically your low spot and I took off about an eighth of an inch. And that's to account for as you're tilting the wall up, it actually at one point becomes a little bit taller than the final height of the wall. In other words, if you make it at the exact height of the wall, it ain't gonna fit. The next thing is to account for clearance once the wall is in place. So my frame sections are sitting about six and a half inches off of the basement wall. This is so I can clear the poofy insulation sort of on the upper half of the wall and allow for good airflow and potentially moisture removal if needed. Now up at the top of the wall, I actually had a bundle of cables that was right in the way of where I wanted the wall to sit. So I had to relocate those. So just take that stuff into account when you build yours. All right, I'm gonna go throw up the rest of the walls. They're more of the same, so I'm not gonna bore you with the same old, same old. You can see I did account for things like this PVC clean out on the floor. You'll wanna make sure you allow access to things like that if needed down the road. So for this section of the wall, since it's not going to be located directly under a floor joist, I needed to put in several of these cross members so I can tie the wall into them.
Now to secure the tops of each wall section, I use some shims to wedge between the floor joists above. You just really need enough to keep the wall in place and allow the screws to sandwich them between the wall and the joist. Since I'm essentially joining two separate walls, I used a piece of string stretched between both ends to check that they were coplanar. This, again, is gonna help keep all the plywood sheets nice and flat. All right, we've got both sections of wall set in place and attached on both the bottom and the tops. Now these walls are not load bearing in the traditional sense. There will be a pull-up bar eventually mounted on this side, as well as a squat rack back here. So they are gonna have to withhold a little bit of weight, but really most of the weight is gonna be coming straight down. That doesn't mean, however, that I didn't wanna test them for strength and they seem to be working okay. So let's head back upstairs into the shop and we'll cut the sheets. And to sheet the walls, we're actually gonna use plywood instead of the more traditional drywall. Now there's a bunch of reasons why we chose to do this. The first of which is I just wanted to waste a ton of money while plywood is at the absolute peak of price in 2021. But the other real benefits are, one, you don't have to finish it if you don't want to, you can just leave it up as plywood. This is a nice birch plywood that's already pre-sanded. Number two is you don't have to tape and float it like you would drywall to get it to look right. And number three, because we're gonna use this as a home gym, we're gonna wanna mount stuff all over the walls. And for the lighter stuff, drilling right into plywood is pretty easy. And before I sheet the walls, I'm gonna go ahead and run the wire for the outlets. Now I have a rough idea of where I want them, but not exact yet. So I'm just gonna leave a loop of wire that I can tie into later. And right about this point, I realized it looks like I'm building a Chipotle in my basement. To clean up the center joint and the outside wall edges, I decided to add a bit of trim, because why not? All right, so with the walls pretty much done, now I just need to prep for paint. So I'm gonna go around with some wood filler, fill in all the screw holes, as well as caulk around any of the trim that we added. Now this is a basement gym. This is not a finished room, so this step is kind of optional, but might as well take some pride in your work and make it look nice. Once all this is dry and then sanded smooth, we'll go across with two coats of paint. And for that, I'm gonna ask my wife for help. Wow, these walls look great. Corinne did awesome. It kind of feels like I'm on a TV set. So now both walls of our basement gym are just about done. But you're probably asking yourself, didn't you run electrical? Where are the outlets? And that's right, I did that on purpose because I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted the outlet boxes. So now that I know that, I'm gonna go cut the holes for each outlet, install an old work single gang electrical box, and get it all hooked up. Once that's done, it's basically just final touches. I'll bring in all the flooring, we'll get everything mounted on the wall, and then we'll do the big reveal.
Now if you're building a gym, whether it's a basement or garage, definitely check out these three quarter inch thick rubber horse stall mats. They are awesome. Heavy and awkward to move, but perfect for a gym. Now to keep the mats from separating over time, I'm adding some quarter round around the perimeter that I painted black and holding down with some heavy duty double sided tape. I think this is actually gonna work really well, but if it eventually does come off, I can always just come back and screw it down with some of those concrete screws. I mean, to say it's an upgrade would be an understatement, right? I have a hard time even remembering what the heck it looked like when we started, but all I know is that this space is exactly what we need. We needed something that actually motivated us to get down here to work out, and I think we accomplished that. 999, 1,000, 1,000, oh, sorry, didn't see you there. Is it even a gym if you don't have a mirror to admire yourself in? Probably. Now, obviously, if you're doing this yourself, you could customize the space to whatever fits your needs. I tend to do more of kind of CrossFit style workouts. My wife really loves riding the Peloton as well as following a program called street parking, which requires just basic equipment and mostly dumbbells. But regardless of what you like or what gets you motivated, I think more people than ever are working out from home as a result of 2020. So if you've got some unfinished space in your basement, you might wanna do this. If you are by chance interested in anything I use during the build or anything you see in the gym around me, I'll try and link those down in the video description below. So go check those out if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button and let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm gonna go get my swole on, but until next time, keep pursuing shop or gym greatness.